So you have a circuit breaker that won't reset when tripped, or if it does reset, you do not have any power being supplied to the branch circuit. In today's video, I'm going to open up the most common type of standard circuit breaker to show you exactly what the problem is. The less common type is one I'm not going to be discussing. It's right over here. You can see a picture of it. It's a magnetic circuit breaker. So inside the circuit breaker, it's going to look completely different from the one you're going to see here in a minute. The magnetic type has a very small solenoid or electromagnet. And what happens, depending on the level of current flowing through the circuit breaker, the magnetic field that's generated by the small solenoid or electromagnet is going to vary. So less current through the circuit breaker, you're going to have less of a magnetic field generated. And higher current, you're going to have a much larger magnetic field. And in the event it exceeds the rating of the breaker, the magnetic field is going to cause the breaker to trip. Right here, you can see a metal clip and that's what snaps into the bus bar in the breaker panel. And the branch circuit is connected to the screw right over here. So in the event the circuit breaker trips, the lever is going to end up in the center. So in order to reset it, you'd have to push it all the way back to the left and then all the way to the on position. But sometimes what happens in the event the breaker trips, it may get stuck in the center and no matter how many times you pull it to the on position, it will not lock in. Sometimes it may lock in, but then there's no power to the branch circuit. If you measure between the screw and the electrical panel's ground or neutral, you're going to see there's no voltage. So let me open one up and show you what the problem is. Now removing the cover on the circuit breaker is very simple and this is a circuit breaker that's faulty. All I had to do is drill out the three rivets. The breaker is already in the on position, so the bus bar where the 120 volts would be connecting to the breaker would be right at this point right here. Power flows in, and you can see the connection being made between these contacts. Power flows into this metal piece, and then you can see there's a wire right over here. It's very thick. That wire is supposed to go around underneath and connect to this piece right in here. You can see there's a copper wire here and it wraps through and around. I'll show you a picture closer. You can see it right over here. And it melted and just blew apart. You can see right in here, there's like this haze on the plastic. Copper that's been deposited after an explosion. You can see that residue that was left behind. And if you look very closely right over here, you're going to see little tiny balls of copper stuck to this piece of metal. So if the circuit breaker is reset to the on position and there's no power to the branch circuit, more than likely you have an opening between this point here and over here. So the circuit is interrupted, current cannot flow through, or due to arcing between these two contact points, a good connection is no longer being made. So it's either here or between this point and this point. If you go to reset the circuit breaker and it just keeps popping back to the middle position, the one thing you're definitely going to want to do is remove the wire going to the branch circuit. Loosen the screw and pull it out. Once you do that, you're going to put the circuit breaker to the off position to reset it and then back to the on position. If the breaker no longer trips, you're going to know the problem is with the branch circuit, more than likely shorted. The way the circuit breaker works is very simple. You have a bimetallic strip and the bimetallic strip for this breaker is right over here. And if I look right inside here, you're going to see that there's a 15 stamped on this. And the circuit breaker design is gonna be the same for all of these between 15 and 60 amps. But the determining factor of when the breaker is going to trip is this metallic strip right over here. Higher current circuit breakers are also going to use thicker braided copper wire to join everything together inside. When current flows through, this strip is going to heat up. It's going to get hotter and hotter as it nears the rating for the breaker. And because it's two dissimilar metals, they're going to expand differently when heated. One is going to expand more than the other. And when that expansion occurs, it's going to cause this whole piece right here to flex in this direction. When it flexes in that direction, it trips. And you can see the circuit opens up and the contact between here is no longer being made. Now, if you're having a problem getting the circuit breaker to go 
all the way to the off position in order to reset it, then the most likely cause for that is damage to this section right over here. So if you had excessive heat or a major, major short circuit, what would happen is that this piece would no longer be in the position that it's in at that angle. And what it would do would be probably moved inward just a little bit and being inward just a little bit is going to prevent this over here, see, from trying to engage into that opening. So that's the reason why it wouldn't reset. If you put it where it's supposed to be and you pull this, it goes right in. What I did here is I took a brand new 15 amp circuit breaker and I cut a window in it so we could see exactly what happens when the circuit breaker trips. Now you can see where the copper wire used to go in the damage breaker and you can see how much of that copper wire vaporized. Okay, let's connect up the load to the circuit breaker. And guys, that is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate thumbs up and share. Thanks for watching.